Welcome to Lady Layden's Learning Library. Today we're going to talk about weaving. We're going to be doing a uh, small loom project. Uh, what is weaving? Well, weaving is how cloth is made. It's a, uh, well, we'll figure it out as we go along, but my belt here was woven on a loom this size, well actually a little bit bigger. This is called an ankle loom. And the uh, cards I have on here are called tablets. And you would, you can make patterns in your, uh, in your weaving that way. But as you can see, I've got strings running this way, and then you have strings running across the band. This is called the warp. It's the long threads that wrap around all these dowel rods. And the cross is called weft. It's actually an old English word meaning that which is woven. This is called a loom. Now the loom we're going to make today is just a little loom just like this. And we'll probably, it will probably create um, a small uh, piece of weaving that you can use for a bookmark. This is called a shuttle. That's what the, uh, the weft thread is uh, wrapped on so that you can put it in between the warp. And you'll see how we do that in a minute. Um, the oldest known textile is, was found in the Americas in Guitaro, Guitarero Cave in Peru. And it dates somewhere from between 10,100 BCE to about 9,080 BCE. Um, medieval, um, in the medieval period, which we, we generally talk about on this little segment, um, the predominant cloth and fiber uh, is wool followed by linen and what's called nettle cloth, made from the plant nettle. Uh, linen is made from flax. Um, cotton was introduced to the, um, to Spain and Sicily as early as about the 9th century AD. Um, there are different types of loom. You saw the Inca loom. There's also what's called a backstrap loom, which is a really, really, really long piece. It's been a while since I've worked with it. But it is just a piece of warping that's attached to a tree or someplace. You know, I could attach this to a doorknob and I could work on, and the other one, other end, would attach to my belt, which creates a nice big long piece. And then I could work it just like that. Um, there are other types types of looms. There's the big four looms that create our cloth that we use today. And it comes in standard widths, such as 36 inches, 45 inches, 60 inches, and 54 inches. Now, some are as big as 108 inches. But the standard widths today are the ones I just mentioned. Now, we're going to build our own loom. One that will, you know, give us enough room to work on like a little bookmark or a dollhouse rug. 
So what you're going to do is you need a ruler, a hammer, a pencil, a little box of nails, and you're going to measure up from the edge. Now your block of wood can be any length, but we want to keep it kind of small just for the mere fact that that's a lot of work to just to make one small piece. So we're going to measure up, let's see, three eighths of an inch and we're going to draw a line. Just like that. And you're going to do that on both sides. Just like that. Okay. Now, on that 3 8 inch line, we are going to We're going to measure out every quarter of an inch and put a dot. Because that's going to tell us where to put our nails. So, after we get that finished, so we're going to do both sides every quarter of an inch. other side just like that All right. and finished now the hammer I'm using comes from Lowe's. It's part of their build and grow. It's kind of awesome. It's got this wonderful little doohickey in the bottom that'll hold your nails for you. It's magnetic. Magnets are nice. See, just like that. And it'll hold it just like that so I can get it put in straight. And I don't have any squished fingers. Moms and dads, you can help um, help your children put this together. Smaller hammer is great for small hands. Just like that. Now, my piece of wood is at about is about seven inches long by about three and a quarter inches wide. So we're gonna put this aside. You can continue to make yours. And now I'm gonna show you how to weave. Now we can do one color, we can do two colors. Now, the uh, thread we're going to use is this right here. It's um, a crochet thread and it's a size 10. And I, it comes in a lot of colors. 
I'm using Anste Orange Black and Gold. So, I, I'm going to do one that's a little bit more complex. You want to make a small knot in the end, a slip knot. Slipped around that. Oops, came apart. I'm going to use a slip knot so that you can tighten it or loosen it as you need to. So just like that. Down like that. Down like that. Down like that. We're doing this on my ankle loom. You want to make sure that's tight, tight, tight. Okay, we're doing this on my ankle loom. I wouldn't have to worry so much about how many I'm doing. So that's four, and then I need to leave one, two, three. So these are all going to be gold. But if I were doing this on my ankle loom, I have ways of doing it where I'm tightening it down and creating and what we're doing is called warping the loom. Make sure that those pop on there. work the way I want it to, but that's okay. You need tiny hands to work tiny knots. Just like that. I like having mine all the way down. Alright. Now we're going to work with the black again. But on the ankle loom, the ankle loom is a little bit larger. So, I'm not working with quite as many tiny knots.
We want it up just a little bit. Just like that. So that we can get our shed sticks. So we can... Since this is not a heddle loom, a heddle is strings or it could be what's called a rigid heddle, pieces of wood that have holes drilled into them. So we're going to take, we're going to use one of these, a popsicle stick has a, uh, a shed stick. That's one. I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And you pop it up just like that. And see that space in between? That's called a shed. So, now what we need to do. is I'm going to wind on my hand just like this. See how I keep my fingers splayed out? That helps keep the loops. That's probably enough to work with for now. Otherwise I would normally have a shuttle just like that. But what we're creating is what's called a thread shuttle. Using the thread to create its own shuttle. I'm just gonna flip that off there. And wrap that around it just like that. That keeps all those threads together. Just like that. Now, in that shed that we've created here, we are going to thread our thread through, just like that. And yes, your shed stick is going to pop down. It happens. All right, just like that. I'm going to leave a little tail out. Okay. And now we're going to go the other way. So, see, it takes so much patience. You know what? It's okay to get up and walk away. Especially if you get frustrated. And it's okay to be frustrated with it. I'm just gonna stick it right through there. See how it comes up over that one? It's gonna come, it's gonna lay on top of that one. We're gonna use that and tamp it down just like that. Keep it nice and loose. All right, now we're gonna go the other way, just like this. And pop that shed back up. Feed our thread back through. Just like that. See? 
then we're gonna come back do the opposite. Under, over, under, over, under. And as you get older, you can learn various types of techniques and how to create designs. But right now, you just need to work on the simple things. Okay, and we feed it back through, just like that. And you can use regular yarn if you want. It won't take nearly as long if you use regular yarn. Okay. Under, over, under, over. Under. Over, under, over, under, over. Okay. And then unwind it a little bit. And Can you see the fabric being created? And back. Shut open. Unwind it just a little bit. Wrap a little bit. It's not, you don't have so much to be dealing with trying to go back and forth. You don't want to pull your string too tight because otherwise your weaving will start bowing. Going back and forth, back and forth. Over, under, over, under. What we're doing is called a basket weave or a plain weave. Meaning over, under, over, under. There are different types of weave. You can do a twill weave, which is kind of diagonal. Or you can do a satin weave, which is over one, under four, over one, under four. Okay, let's see. Sometimes you might have to move them up. So you can see what you're doing. Oops. 
square one. Pop it open. Stuff it through. Make sure that it sits right down there. Bring the shed down. Yep, your shed will snap down occasionally. You can use your fingers to bring those down. You can also use a fork. Okay. the wrong way. That's okay. It just means you have to start over. Starting over isn't awful. just keep going back and forth back and forth and it's something you can put away and come back to Oops. And make sure your strings stay tight and as you go along See? Can you see the fabric forming right there? It's going to take me a while to get all the way down to the end. But in the end, it's going to be really pretty. And you can work with as many colors as you want. You can make stripes along. Um, or you can just do a single color, or you can do it like I am, because see, it's hard to see, especially since I'm using yellow, that you can see the black coming through on the ends here. So, let's see. this way since we stopped and forgot and that's okay you can stop and forget pick it up and then work backwards sometimes it's easier to see where you're going 
and what you're doing if you work backwards. Just like that. So weaving really isn't all that hard and it's really kind of satisfying once you've finished a project. where I'm going anyway. I won't necessarily say that I know what I'm doing. Just back and forth, back and forth, over, under, over, under. Just like that. Now, moms and dads. Hey kids, I hope you had fun. Moms and dads, you can, the loom that I made here is in this book here, Weaving with Little Handmade Looms, uh, by Harumi Kage, Kageyama. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Um, but it has all sorts of little kinds of looms that you can make with your kids and um, practice your weaving. There's all sorts of things you can do with weaving. Um, the tapestries, like the unicorn, uh, were woven. Um, that is called, and that is woven using what's called a cartoon and different colors of thread, kind of like the oriental carpets only carpets are knotted whereas tapestries are woven um but you know moms and dads if you um if you have a ankle loom let them try um show them what heddles are show them uh how to manipulate the threads it's okay if you don't have it. You can make your own. Um, and it's really pretty simple. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time.